Okay, so let's get started. In this directory, I have three source files. I have hello.cpp, hello.h, and main.cpp. If I compile these files using G++, as you can see, we get hello world back. And let me just show you what these files actually do. Whoops. Okay, so what these files do is essentially we have hello.cpp that just prints out hello world. We have hello.h that's just the declaring the hello function. In the main cpp, we're just executing the hello function. That's pretty simple. So to actually build these files using makefile, what we're going to do is we are going to open makefile. So make sure you get a name called makefile. Don't uh, call it anything else. And here, what we're going to do is we are going to just define a new rule. We're going to define a new rule, which is going to target main.out. So we're going to say we want to build the file main.out. And to build this file main.out, what do we need? Well, we need two files, as you saw previously. We need hello.cpp and we need main.cpp. Okay, so... In makefile, this is called the target, and these are called their prerequisites. So to, to build this target, to make this file, as the name implies, to make a file, make that out, we need hello.cpp and we need main.cpp. Okay, so on this line, this is the recipe. This is how you actually build this file. So on this line, we're going to say g++ main. and then hello.cpp. And then we're going to output main.out. I write quit, save that. Let's see if we have this. No, we don't. And then we write make. We just type make and then hit enter. And as you can see, this magically ran this command for us. And let's check this file. And we see that we got main.out back. Let's execute main.out. And as you expect, we get hello world. Okay, that's awesome. Okay, so why is this useful? Why do you want to use make? Well, let me just demonstrate a very useful aspect of make. So let's say I write make again. Well, it gives me back this message. It says main.out is up to date. What does that mean? Well, what does it mean it's up to date? Let's just uh, look at the listing here and let's check this out. Okay, so main.out was built at 10.15. And let's see, main.cpp, the last time I updated main.cpp was at 8.31. And the last time I updated hello.cpp was at 10.15. So main.cpp and hello.cpp are actually older than main.out. So logically, I already built this. So I already built this and this these two files are actually older. So there's no point in rebuilding uh, this this main.out because this main.out is actually newer than main.cpp and hello.cpp. But if we update main.cpp or hello.cpp, it's going to force make to rebuild main.out because at that point, main.out will be older than this file or this file. So let's actually do that. So the easiest way to update a file would be to just touch it, right? So we just do touch and then we're going to touch main.cpp ls.lh and as you can see now uh, we see that main.out is built at 1025 and main.cpp was built at uh, well not built but last updated at 1032 okay so if we run make again as you can see it builds the file again so this is why you want to use make in make every time you update a file it's going to selectively go in and compile only the files that need to be recompiled. So if there are files that do not need to be recompiled, it will not recompile them, which actually saves you a lot in terms of compilation speed. So it may not look you know, that impressive now with just the two files. If you have like 25 files or 30 files, it's going to actually save you a lot of time if you only need to compile the files that need that have been updated since the last time you ran make. Okay, now that we understand that, let's break out our main file into several rules. So let's open make. Okay, so here we have hello.cpp and main.cpp as the prerequisites for this main.out file. And the problem here is that both main.cpp and hello.cpp need to be compiled every single time. So every single time we change either main.cpp or hello.cpp, 
both files need to be recompiled. And that makes this uh, make file inefficient. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to define a couple more rules here, right? So I'm going to make a rule for hello.o. And this hello.o is going to have a prerequisite going to be called hello.cpp. And here, what we're going to do is going to say g++ dash c. And then we are going to compile hello.cpp. And I'm going to output that as hello.o. Great. Okay, next up, what we're going to do is I'm going to say main.o. So this is going to be the main.o object file. And we're going to say uh, this, is, this has a re prerequisite of main.cpp. Then we're going to compile this. Oops. We're going to compile this main.cpp and then dash o main.o. Okay, great. So now that we have these two rules, we have a rule for making hello.o and we have a rule for making main.o. Okay, so instead of having the prerequisites be main.cpp and hello.cpp, we're going to say the prerequisites now are going to be hello.o and main.o. So basically what this is going to do is it's going to look at these two prerequisites it's going to say, okay, do we have hello.o and do we have main.o? And if we do, or if we don't, it's going to go down here and it's going to say, okay, so this is the target for hello.o. How do we build this? And it's going to say this prerequisite is hello.cpp. In that case, it's going to compile, it's going to check uh, for that file. And then what it's going to do is it's going to say hello.cpp. We're going to compile this. I'm going to output this as hello.o. And also make sure you go down here and you change this to main.o and hello.o. Okay. So basically what we're doing now is we are compiling it separately. So we're compiling hello.o and main.o. And if either if either hello.cpp or main.cpp change, we only compile main.o or hello.o based on which uh, source file changed. Okay, great. So let's write quit and we're going to clear this. I'm going to make, and as you can see here, we compiled hello.o, we compiled main.cpp, or should I say we compiled main.o, and then we compiled this as well. And let's execute this. Oops. Okay, and let's execute main.o and we get hello world back. Okay, great. So let's change one of the files. So we can say vim main.cpp. Okay. So we're going to change this and we are just going to run hello twice. And then if we type make, we didn't recompile hello.o. We only recompiled main.o. What this file is doing is it's checking the prerequisites against the target. So it goes and checks hello.o and then checks which is older. Is hello.o is hello.o older than hello.cpp? If hello.cpp is younger than hello.o, it's gonna recompile hello.o. If main that's if main.o is older than main.cpp, then it's gonna recompile main.o. So essentially what this is doing is it's just checking which is older, and then if it's older, it's gonna run uh, this command on here, right? So basically that's the gist of it. That's basically all you need to know about, like this is like 90% of uh, makefile. If you understand this, you basically understand makefile. If you like this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. Okay, so with this makefile, we have uh, three rules and basically this works pretty well. This, this is fine. This is for most of your problems, this is going to work just fine for you. You can just like keep extending it as much as you want. But let's say we want to uh, like modify it, right? Let's say we want to change the compiler from G++ to Clang or to GCC or something like that. How do we do that? Well, we could optionally just go in here and say like GCC, G GCC or Clang and then Clang. Um, now, here's the problem with this. As we type out, as we get more and more files, as we get like, um, let's say like in the future, we have like 100 files here. We're going to have to modify this in 100 places. And instead of doing that, we can optionally just set a variable. We can go up here. We can make a variable called, uh, let's say we're going to call this like uh, CC or something, right? And then we're going to assign it to uh, G++. And then down here, Instead of typing, uh, you know, G++, we can just do something like this. So CC, 
Close this. CC. And so basically down here, what we're doing is we're using variable instead of just using like a hard-coded compiler. So instead of using a compiler such as, such as like G++, I can just go up here and I can say, okay, instead of using uh, G++, what we're going to do is we are going to use uh, Clang or we're going to use GCC. I'm just going to keep this as G++ for now and let's recompile this or let's remake this to see if this works. Mm, okay. I think I need to update everything here. Okay, so as you can see, this command still ran. We're still using G++. Now, another thing you can do is you can also uh, specify flags. So for example, so for example, we can say, we can say flags, and then what, what kind of flags do we want? Let's say we want, uh, Let's say we want optimiz optimization level three, and down here we can just do something like And as you can see, we're optimizing everything with dash o three. Okay, so another thing you can do is you can set the name of the output to just be automatically the name of the target. So uh, if your target and the output name here are the same, you can essentially just use a variable, a built-in variable into uh, make, which is just a dollar sign at sign. And then you can do the same down here. So this is really useful for if you want to change the name of the target, uh, you can just uh, do this without having to change it in two places at the same time. So let's make this. And as you can see, again, this got substituted with the name of the target. Okay, and the last thing that we can do is we can change, let's say we have hello.o and main.o. Uh, if we change the name here from hello.o hello and main.o to something else, uh, down here, we are probably going to change it too, right? So what we can do is we can just, instead of typing out all of the uh, prerequisites down here that we're using, we can just use a variable, which is uh, going to look like this. And it's going to say, I'm going to say dollar sign, then uh, carrot symbol, I believe. And basically, this is just going to take all of the prerequisites and then, you know, paste them here. It's going to substitute this, uh, it's going to substitute this uh, symbol with uh, all of their prerequisites, which is actually pretty useful. Uh, and down here, same, uh, we don't want to hard code this. We're going to say dollar sign, then carrot. Then down here, again, dollar sign, and then carrot. And uh, here we are going to compile this, we're gonna, um, or we're going to make this again, type make. And as you can see, uh, basically all of our prerequisites got substituted. Okay, I mean, that's pretty much if uh, you need to know more about uh, make, I recommend you go to uh, the official website for make and uh, check it out.